Let's look at both the quantum mechanical description and the Lewis dot structure description of a molecule. We'll pick oxygen, O2. Oxygen, each atom has six valence electrons in principal quantum level two. So when they come together, it's a 12 electron system. And we can draw the Lewis dot structure like this. Two oxygens, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons. Each oxygen obeys the octet. It has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. So that's our good Lewis electron dot structure. Let's look at the quantum mechanical description. So for the quantum mechanical description, we're going to bring in those valence orbitals, the two principal quantum level two orbitals, the 2s, the 2p orbitals. When we bring together the 2s orbitals, remember s orbitals have spherical symmetry. They add to give us a sigma bonding orbital. So when I take the plus combination of these two, I get amplitude between the two nuclei. Constructive interference, that's a lower energy sigma bonding orbital. If I take the minus combination, I get a node between the two nuclei. Higher energy sigma antibonding. Sigma because the electrons lie along the internuclear axis. So sigma bonding, sigma antibonding, and I'll start to energetically plot them. So I have a bonding orbital and an antibonding orbital as energy increases going up the screen. So those are the s orbitals. Let's take the p orbitals. There's six p orbitals, three on each atom. So oxygen, here's oxygen with a px, a py, and a pz orbital. The plus and minus designations indicated by the colors. So let's take the pz, the internuclear axis is z. So when I make the linear combinations of the pz, I can get a sigma bonding orbital. It's called sigma because the electron density is along the internuclear axis. And if I take the other linear combination, I can get a sigma antibonding orbital at higher energy with a node between the two nuclei. Remember, the more nodes, the higher energy the orbital, this already having three nodes. Again, sigma bonding, sigma antibonding, energetically distributed. Now, let's look at the px and the py. The px and the py lie in front and behind and above and below the internuclear axis. And you can see that on a model when I bring together and add my orbitals appropriately here. Here's the z axis, and I'm forming a sigma bonding orbital along z. I'll have electron density above and below the internuclear axis and in front and behind the internuclear axis from the py and the px. It doesn't really matter which one I look at. They're both identical in energy. So I can take px's and py's, four orbitals, a px and a py from one oxygen and a px and a py from the other oxygen and form four molecular orbitals. The molecular orbitals that I make from the plus combination will form a pi bonding orbital. Now pi because the electrons are above and below the internuclear axis. And there's two that are identical, one from the px's adding and one from the py's adding. So those will have the same energy. And the minus combination gives me antibonding pi orbitals, two of those, one from the minus combination of px and one from the minus combination of py. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight orbitals from the eight atomic orbitals that I started with. Each oxygen had an s and three p's. So four orbitals on each oxygen, eight total, make eight molecular orbitals. I need to fill those with the 12 valence electrons from oxygen. So O2 has 12 valence electrons. I use my Hund's rule, my Pauli exclusion principle, to fill up the molecular orbitals with 12 electrons. When I do, I find this kind of configuration. And let's calculate the bond order. So the bond order, I have a sigma bonding and antibonding orbital to start. Two electrons in each, those cancel each other out, zero bond order from that. Now I have 
one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in bonding orbitals here, and two electrons in antibonding orbitals here. So six minus two is four bonding electrons divided by two, two formal bonds. So I have a formal bond order of two in oxygen, and that is consistent with the double bond that my Lewis dot structure predicted. But here's something that the Lewis dot structure didn't predict. Oxygen has two unpaired electrons. Oxygen is paramagnetic. Now, we never would have got that from the Lewis electron dot structure. Everything looks paired up and neat in the electron dot structure. But the molecular orbital picture, the quantum mechanical picture, predict that we have unpaired electrons and paramagnetism in oxygen. And if you do the experiment, you find that oxygen is actually paramagnetic, and you'll see that in the demonstration lab. So the molecular orbital picture, more powerful in determining a molecular property than the Lewis electron dot structure.